Okay guys, in this video we're going to have a look at uh, rounding um, to decimal places and to significant figures. So it comes up all the time in loads of different questions, loads of different topics, whenever there's decimal places or something that needs rounding. So for example, you could have circles or when dealing with Pythagoras or stuff like that. So it's always a useful thing to know. It's always worth usually one mark in an exam, so it's an easy mark to pick up and we definitely don't want to be losing it. So, let's get started. I've got loads of examples here. First one, I'm going to round this number to the nearest integer. Now, lots of people forget what this word integer means. It just means the nearest whole number. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put an arrow above that. Well, there's the units because there's a decimal point. That's the first whole number because that's the first decimal point. So, this is where I'm going to round to. Now, when you're rounding, if that's where I'm rounding to, the next number is what I'm going to be looking at. Now, if this number is below 5, we round down, in which case this number here stays the same. And if this number is 5 or above, it means we add 1 to this one. Lots of people think when you round down, you take one away. That's not true. Round down, it stays the same. Round up, we add 1. Okay, so this is 2, which is obviously four or below, so I'm going to round down so it's going to stay the same. So it is just seven, six, three. Okay. Next one, I'm going to round this to the nearest ten. Again, I'm going to put an arrow over the tens column. So the five in this case is the tens column. And I'm going to look at the next number. Again, it's a two. So I'm going to round down. So this stays the same. So the four and the 5 stays the same, but obviously rounding 452 to 45 would be a bit silly, so you might have already guessed it. All we do is we just add that 0 there. Okay. Again, I'm going to round to the nearest 100, so I'm going to look at my number here, 21,671. I want to look at the 100s column. In this case, it's the 6, and I look at the next number. Now this time it's a 7. So remember what I said at the start, if it's 5 or more, so 5, 6, 7, 8 or 9, we round up, which means I add 1 to this number here. So I need to add 1 to 6. So I'm going to have 2, 1. I'm adding 1 to the 6, so that becomes 7. And just like before when I added the 0 here, I now have got two numbers here, so I need to add two zeros. So 21,700. And the last sort of easy one, again, running to the nearest thousand, so I'll put an arrow over the thousands column, which is that nine there, and I'm looking at the next number, which again is a nine. So it's nine is five or above, so I'm going to round up, so I'm going to add one to this. Okay. Now what some people do is just go, oh, that's a one, and leave it like that, so it becomes 1,000 or something like that. That's not true. If I want to add one to this nine, you could treat it like a column method if you like. I'm going to add one up here or something, however you, however you want to do it. So if I add one to here, 9 becomes 10, so this will become a 0, and I carry one over to this side here. Okay, so if I carry one over here, this will become a 0. So in other words, it'll be 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. It becomes 10,000. Okay, so just be very careful of that one. If that's a 9, it becomes a 0, I carry 1 over and I add 1 to this column. Obviously, there's nothing there, so that this 1 becomes a 1 and stays there. Let's go on to some more interesting ones then. So here we go, decimal places. Again, I'm going to put an arrow over what number I want to round to. So first decimal place here. Well, there's the decimal point, so it's the first number after that. So it's this 3 there. That's the first decimal point. And I'm going to look at the next number, which is a 6, and that tells me I'm going to round up. So I'm going to add 1 to this 3, so it becomes 2.4. Don't have to worry about any zeros after that, because obviously 2.4 is the same as 2.400. And actually, if you add the zeros, it actually means that you've rounded to a different number. So we don't want to do that. We just want to leave it as 2.4. Next one, 6.73. Again, I'm running to one decimal place, so I'm going to look, there's my decimal point. First number after that is there, which is a 7, and that's what I'm rounding to. So I look at the next number, which is a 3, which tells me I'm going to round down. Because it's 4 or below, I round down, so everything stays the same. So 
Okay, nice and easy that one. Looks horrible, but just keep using the same strategy. Two decimal places, so there's a decimal point. So that's the first decimal place. That must mean that's the second decimal place. So that's the one that I'm rounding to. So I look at the next number. Again, it's a two, which tells me I'm gonna round down because it's below four. So when I round down, everything stays the same. So 13.73. Again, another tricky one here. One decimal place, there's my decimal point. There's the one decimal place. And there's my next number. Again, it's this nine. So I'm gonna round up, which means I need to add one to this. Now, if I add one to that, obviously it becomes 10. So again, treat it like a column method, just like I did up here. So that's gonna be a zero, and I'm gonna carry one over. Now, if I carry one over, I'm gonna have one add nine, which again is 10. So this will become a zero, and again, I then carry that one over. So in other words, I'm gonna have 10, so that's one and then zero, point, and again, that was will be turned into a zero, so again, it's zero. Now, some people just write 10 because 10 is the same as 10.0. Yep, you're 100% correct. However, when you're rounding, if you've rounded to one decimal place, you must have one decimal place, even if it's a zero. So in this case, you must have 0 0.0, and they're very, very, very sharp on that in exams. You need to make sure you're doing it. So as you can see here, at one decimal place, I have one decimal place, one decimal place, one decimal place, two decimal places, I have two decimal places, one decimal place, again, you must have that one decimal place. Okay, so hopefully that's okay with uh, decimal, running decimal places. Next one is significant figures, and this is the one that people tend to mess up. So a little bit of a um, heads up before we get cracking on rounding. I've got this number here, 76,023.98, okay? Now the first significant figure is the first non-zero number. So if I come from the left-hand side, I'm looking for the first non-zero number, which is nice and easy, it's seven. Okay, so that one is the first significant figure. And once you have the first significant figure, the rest of it's easy, because the next number is the second, and then the third, and so on and so forth. So if that's the first, second, third, fourth, fifth, that would be the sixth and that would be the seventh. Okay, so that's just nice and easy. The first non-zero number is the first significant figure, and then you just carry on second, third, fourth, and fifth, and so on. This is where it gets tricky, because people then go, okay, the zero here, when it's 0 0.005706, that zero is the first significant figure. Unfortunately, that's not the case. Remember what I said at the start here, it's the first non-zero number. So that's a zero, that's a zero, that's a zero. The five is actually the first non-zero number, in which case that is the first significant figure, and then so on, the seven would be the second, this zero would be the third, and then the six would be the fourth. Okay, so that's how you identify significant figures. So if we have a look at rounding some questions now then, if I have 7,238 and I want to round it to one significant figure or one SF in, uh, as it gets shortened down to, I look for the first significant figure, which is the first non-zero number, which is the seven. And the rounding rules are exactly the same. I then look at the next one, which is a two. So then I'm doing two, which is obviously rounding down. So that stays the same. And just like before, if you round it to seven, it's a bit silly. So what we do is we add three zeros because there's three numbers there that we haven't used. So seven was the number we rounded to, add three zeros. Same thing here. First significant figure, it's not that one, just like I said over here, it's the first non-zero number. So that zero doesn't count, that's a zero doesn't count. This one does, because it's a four. So that's the first significant figure. Next number is a three. So a three tells me to round down. So it's 0 0.04, it stays the same because obviously I'm rounding down. Next one here, this time I'm after the second significant figure. So again, looking for the first non-zero, so that's the first significant figure. Then the two is the second significant figure, which means I'm looking at that six. Six is above five, so I round up, so I add one to that two. So nine, add one to the two, gives me three. And again, add in your zeros of all the numbers that you have missed. 
or got rid of, sorry. So four zeros there, four zeros there. And last one, massive number here. I'm after the third significant figure. So I ignore that one because it's a zero. That's a zero, that's a zero, that's a zero. Ah, there's the first non-zero number. So that's the first significant figure, which means that's the second, which means the four must be the third significant figure. So I'm looking at the nine. Nine is definitely above five, so I round up. So I'm adding one to that six. So it'd be 0 0.0007. So I'm not adding one to six, I'm adding one to the four. So it'd be 0 0.00076, and then adding one to the four to give me five. Okay, so hopefully that's given you a little bit of help and reminded you how to do that. Obviously, any questions, just go and see your teacher and they'll explain it in a bit further. Thanks, guys.